Uh, for those of you who have not seen Napoleon Dynamite, uh, you don't need to raise your hand because I'll probably verbally scold you right now. But this is recorded. Yes. Um, you need to see it. It's dumb. It's funny. And it's dumb. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So let's get started here. Uh, this is CP1, Circles and Polygons 1, Lesson 2. Uh, lesson 1, you should have watched the uh, video on last week. If you haven't, you can go ahead and check that out on Schoology. It's free. Okay. We're going to talk today about triangles and quadrilaterals. What are all these shapes right here? How many sides do each of those shapes have? Four. How many muscles do you have in your leg? upper leg between your knee and your hip. Four. That's why it's called your quadricep. Quadricep. Quadrilateral. Yes. Four sides. Quadricep is actually the biggest muscle in your body. Okay, cool. Right triangle. What's true about a right triangle? It has three sides. What else does it have that's special? It has one 90, right? A triangle is one right angle. We call that a right angle, so we don't have to say the word 90. That takes too long to say. Right. Right angle. There you go. Uh, what's true about the other two angles? What do they have to add up to? What do 45 and 45 add up to? 90. What do 60 and 30 add up to? 90. So the other two angles always have to add to 90. That actually makes life a lot easier when we get to solving right triangles. Okay. Cool. An acute triangle. What's true about an acute triangle? What's less than 90? How many of them? All of them? A triangle with three acute angles. You're right, Kylie. I fooled you by looking at you weird. Okay. Fine. Uh, so as I look at this, I got an acute angle, I got an acute angle, I got an acute angle. All of those are less than 90. Oh, cool. What do the three of them have to add up to? 180. 180. Sometimes they're the same. If they're the same, that's called an equilateral triangle. Cool. All right, and the third one. Kylie, can I pick on you again? Let's see if I can fool you this time. Okay, obtuse triangle, how many obtuse angles? One, yeah, good, good call. There, in an obtuse triangle, there will be one obtuse angle. What does that mean? One angle that is what? Greater than 90 and less than? Yeah. 180, right? Obtuse means this angle, let's call this angle theta, that's a Greek symbol, but that angle would be less than 180 and greater than 90. Okay, so in this case, our obtuse angle, its measure is 130. Right? The other two angles have to be acute. Have to be acute. What was that, Dylan? Yeah, he's a really good player. All right, let's talk scalene. What is scalene triangle? We talked about this a couple weeks ago, I think. What does it mean to be scalene? It has to do with the side lengths. Anybody? That's true in every triangle, right? The two shorter sides have to add up to be more than the third side. But what's true about a scalene triangle is that each of the sides has a different length, right? It has no congruent side length. All the sides have a different length. Now we're talking side length not angle measure. Right? So a scalene triangle has three different side lengths. Okay. And so equilateral, what's true about an equilateral? It has how many congruent side lengths? All sides are equal, yeah. All three sides are congruent. I put the markings up there for you. That was nice. That's free of charge. And isosceles. Isosceles has, and it is a little bit tricky, but at least two congruent sides. An equilateral triangle is actually also an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is not always an equilateral triangle. 
So does this triangle right here have at least two sides that are congruent? Yes, so it's isosceles and it's equilateral. But this triangle right here is not equilateral. It's only isosceles. Uh, don't get too bent out of shape over that. If you call this equilateral on a test, you'll be right. If you call this isosceles on a test, you'll be right. But don't call this equilateral. Okay, it's got to have three equal sides to equal it. Cool. All right, let's talk parts of the uh, triangle. Not yet. All right, um, let's talk parts of the isosceles triangle. What were these two side lengths called? They're equal in length, so we called them the l -l legs. Is that what you said, Sydney? Okay. Those are the legs. What were these two angles called? Right here and right here, we call them the b b base angles. Yes, base angles. Good. We call this thing up here, this angle, the anybody the vertex angle. Yes, vertex angle. And we call this length down here, this side, the base. So that's weird. The base angles are connected to the base. Weird. And the vertex is on the opposite side across from the base, correct? Yes. Cool. Okay, those are just some of the parts of the isosceles triangle in case we use verbiage, math verbiage with it. All right, let's continue. A trapezoid. We've already talked through this. How many pair of parallel sides in a trapezoid? Not two. One pair, right? Across from each other. It has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Now we're talking quadrilateral. Four-sided shapes. A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. I'm going to draw a couple more. Is that a trapezoid? Yeah. Is it okay that it has a 90 here and here? Yeah, that's okay. That's cool. How about a little baby trapezoid? Oh, baby. No, I'm not going to make it such a baby trapezoid. Is that a trapezoid? Guess they're parallel, yeah. One pair. Okay, a kite. Uh, a kite. A kite has, whoa, this is kind of weird. See this distinction here? This side and this side. That side and that side. Sorry, Packer fans. It has two pair of congruent sides, and those sides are called distinct pair of consecutive sides. So this is a kite. The sides have to connect. They can't be across from each other. That's called something else that we're going to get to in a minute. So let me show you something that is not a kite. This is not a kite. Ready? This is not going to be a kite. Everyone is ready that this is not going to be a kite. Ready? Oh, Mr. Law, that looks so similar. This is not a kite. What is this? Nope. I don't know anything about parallel yet. This is a parallelogram, right, because these are not consecutive sides, right? Those are sides across from each other. So, Reed, you're absolutely right. They are parallel, but it's called a parallelogram, not a kite, because those congruent sides are across from each other. So there we go. Here's our parallelogram. It has two pair of parallel sides, or opposite sides are congruent. That ensures that they're parallel. That locks it in, right? That locks it in. Recording. Okay, let's move on, see what's next. Rhombus. What's true about a rhombus? All four sides are equal. Correct. It is called equilateral 
parallelogram. That means the opposite sides are parallel to one. And in a rectangle, very similar to a rhombus, except what's true? Yeah, it has all 90 degree angles, so it's an equiangular parallelogram. So the parallelogram family is split into a, a couple of different, um, yeah. So I have a rhombus, which has all sides the same. I have a parallelogram, which has all angles the same. And then I have a square that has all sides and all angles the same. So it's a, a regular quadrilateral. Oh, my gosh. It's equiangular and equilateral. Let me go back for those of you who still need it. Right? A rhombus is an equilateral parallelogram. A rectangle is an equiangular parallelogram. And a square is both, which we call regular. All right, here we go. Let's move on. I want to talk about the quadrilateral family. Well, here's the family of quadrilaterals. Anybody ever seen Christmas Vacation? Chevy Chase, right? So Uncle Eddie, right? Remember when Uncle Eddie empties the tank, right, into the gutter? Okay, so Uncle Eddie is kind of like a kite, right? It has nothing in common really that much with everybody else. Kind of sits over here alone. Like his part of the family tree is like, oh, my gosh, they are related, though. Right? Can you with me? <laughs> And then, you know, then there's the part of the family that kind of gets it a little bit more. They got one pair of parallel sides. Those are the trapezoids. Right? And then there's the, the part of the family that kind of gets it. You know, they have it all together. They got two pair of parallel sides, some of which are, you know, maybe a little smarter than the others. Right? The first generation of these parallelograms, they're like, we're the parallelograms. And then they got smarter, right? And they're like, hey, we could have right angles in our corner. Right? And the other side of the, that part of the family is like, we could have all our sides the same. And they're like, hey, you know what? It'd be really smart if maybe we had all these attributes in one. And this is the golden child, the square. There it is. It is a parallelogram, but it has equal sides and angles, just like the special child in the family. You know that kid that, like, at, uh, you know, whatever um, holiday you're at when they, like, break a vase and then grandma's like, oh, my gosh, are you okay? Not like, hey, you broke the vase. She's like, oh, my gosh. Am I recording? I am. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then you're over here. You're like, hey, what happened? Last year I chucked something and hit, like, the mirror, and I got sent out in the cold, and I had to pack snowballs to make ice cubes for our beverages that evening. <laughs> no? Okay, so the square is the golden child, and Aaron is – Kind of stressed that I'm still recording. Are you stressed? 